Dynamics AX 2012, we've implemented a new product configuration module. And this is placed in the product information management area. This module is accessed through the project configuration models list page. The first thing to do when you want to create a new product configuration model is click this icon and then decide on a name for your model. You can add a description and then you have to select whether you want to use an existing component or create a new component and in this contain we'll do a new component. Pressing OK and then open up the details form for this model. Now there's a number of informations that are required in order to build a model um, and where I want to start is by defining the subcomponents that I have in my model. So in my home theater the first subcomponent is the video part. So I'm adding this. The reason we have both a name and a solver name column is that the solver has some restrictions when it comes to defining names and the solver in this case is the Microsoft Solver Foundation that uh, maintain all of the constraints um, and the name column is then added uh, in order to allow you to provide a uh, more user-friendly uh, name. This is the name that will be shown in the configuration UI can add a description that also represents the help text in the configuration UI and then I can map it to a component. This is to support reusability. So I'll pick the video system, press F5 to refresh the screen and then uh, I need to associate it with a item. Any of the uh, items that are a product master and uh, constraint-based variant configuration technology can be used and I'm picking the video system. Um, I'm saying that this should be included in the bomb calculation and I'm also setting up that I want to include one with each configuration. The next component I have is the audio part and I'm mapping this to the audio system. Picking up the audio component, adding it to calculation, setting quantity to one and saying OK. Now if I find out that I need a new component, what I have to do is first create a placeholder for this component. In this case I'm going to create one for a remote So, having created a placeholder, I can now add it to my product configuration model. And map it through the component I just created. And finally, I need to pick up an item number for this. Having the component structure in place, I will now go ahead and create attributes. Attributes are similar to variables in product builder models and they describe the properties of the components. So adding a new attribute here that calls out the number of channels my home system have. And mapping it to an attribute type. Attribute types are defined once and can be used for any attribute in all product configuration models. So in this case I'm looking for my 
sound system attribute type. I can decide whether or not this should have a default value and then pick from the list of available values for this attribute type. And finally, I can decide if this should be mandatory. If I say this attribute should be mandatory, meaning that the user will always have to fill it out, I can insert a condition. This is in the form of an expression constraint. And we will look a little closer at expression constraints when we look at the next tab. So any number of attributes can be added, but let's move on and look at the constraints. Now, I haven't defined any constraints from our home theater yet. So let's take a look at one of the existing components. For instance, the video, we can see that there are a number of different constraints. They are all of the type expression constraint, meaning that they are written as declarative constraint using the solver foundation syntax. We also have the concept of table constraints and table constraints are defined once and can be used across many different components. Table constraints can be either user defined or system defined in this case, we have two user-defined comp table constraints. Those are a combination of attribute types, whereas a system-defined table constraint is mapping to an AX table and resemble the concept that we have in Product Builder. So with the constraints in place, we can take a look at user requirements. User requirements are similar to subcomponents. The only difference you will notice is that it doesn't have a mapping to an item number. What this means is that it basically represents a phantom BOM and any BOM line included in a user requirement will be rolled up into the parent component. Other than that, they are similar to subcomponents. Finally, we have the bomb lines, and this is where the rubber meets the asphalt. Let's take a look at one of the subcomponents here, and we can see that we have a number of different bomb lines. The bomb lines are, of course, held together in a bomb structure created for this subcomponent uh, and the item that it's represented. Bomb line can have a name and description, and then you can add a condition in order to exclude some bomb lines from some configurations. They are all mapped to an item number, and in this case, all items and services defined in this company can be used. Finally, we have the route operations, and this is similar to the way we define bomb lines, meaning we give them a name and a description. You can add a condition in order to uh, decide if a certain operation should be included or not, and then map it to one of your existing operations. So once all of this information is in place, you have a complete product configuration model.